Hey everyone, welcome to EduPlay Learning, educating kids and equipping families. I'm your host, Christine Furman, and I am so excited to share with you today some tips and tricks that I have and that many of my audience members have contributed to traveling with kids. So what are some of the things that families have found that make it a little bit easier to travel with our kiddos? Well, today we are going to be sharing all kind, kinds of tips and tricks and ways that the kids can help you, ways that you could make the trip go a lot smoother. So please join me as I share so many amazing things that we're going to help our kiddos. So we're going to dive in today and there are some things. So we travel to Pittsburgh a lot. Okay, so we are from Pittsburgh, PA, and we are in Augusta, Georgia, and we travel about six times a year, and we stay for about two weeks. So we always like to make sure that we have everything that we need. And it was not easy at first. When we moved and we made our first trip, I remember saying, okay, we're leaving at 7 a.m. We're going to leave. We're going to be ready. Well, I left way too many things to do for the morning and we didn't leave until hmm, 11, 11 or 12. And then we didn't get in uh, until about 11 or 12 that night. So that was a long, long trip. Um, it was not, um, we were not ready. We were not prepared at all for that. And if anyone knows me, they know that I love to prepare for everything. So anything you can think of, I am throwing it in the car and we are making sure that we have everything. Plus we travel with our dog Daisy. So all of the things we, we just try to jam pack it. And the kids were younger, right? The kids were uh, they're six and eight now. So, I mean, when we started doing this, that was about three years ago. So, so three and five around there. Um, and it was like, okay, how are we, how are we navigating this? How are we managing all of the things plus the dog, plus the travel plus, you know, so over these past three years, I have gotten pretty good at making our trip a lot more efficient than when I first started. And I don't save nearly as much stuff for the morning before. And I also um, prepare throughout the week. So like this week, I did not really schedule too many things on my calendar because I was making sure that I was preparing for our trip. And so some of the things that I'm going to share with you are how the kids help for our travel. What do they do and how do I help set them up for success so they can help get us ready for the trip? Um, what are some of the snacks that we take? What are some of the games that we play? And I'm going to share with you guys some of the great ideas that you guys came up with. Um, my audience in the Facebook group came up with some awesome, awesome ideas. So first I want to share with you packing. Let's talk about packing, right? So that's probably one of the first things that we got, we have to think about. We have to make sure that we have all the right clothes, um, one of the tricky things for us is when we travel up in the springtime, it's not as warm up in Pittsburgh. I remember the first time I did not bring as many warm clothes. So making sure that you're checking the weather where you're going and packing accordingly. And for me, I always, no matter where I go, I always make sure everyone has a sweatshirt. I always make sure everyone has jeans um, or some kind of pants and make sure that we have our swimsuit. Because here's the thing, you just never know what's going to happen. And that that is the planning, the planner in me, you know, just setting everyone up for success. Because even if we're going to the beach, there might be a chilly night. Um, that's one of the things I always made sure that I did. I always packed for all the things. So how the kids help pack now, they each have their own suitcase. So this trip in particular, um, I said, okay, go grab your suitcases. So they get their suitcase. And then Ella actually asked me so, to write down what she needs. So I did that. I wrote, wrote her down a message and I said, okay, you need so many pairs of underwear. You need so many pairs of pants. You need so many short sleeve shirts, so many long sleeve shirts. And I said, and grab a couple dresses. And she said, okay, but how many? Like what 
how many like specifically do you want? So that was something that I was realizing. Like, even when you say, go grab a few of these, they want to know exactly how many. And what I do is I, I overpack. I don't know about you. Let me know in the comments. Are you guys overpackers? Are you underpackers? I am a hundred percent an overpacker. I always make sure that we have more than enough. Um, and sometimes I, um, and sometimes I don't even wear it. Depends on what we're doing. Depends on where we're going. Um, I don't even wear all the clothes, but I like to have it. I like to have options when I'm traveling. So I do have that uh, overpacking for myself for sure. Um, I also have the kids pick out their pajamas that they want, socks. So really, and really starting to think about what are some of the things that you're going to do there? Like this trip in particular, we're going to be there over Easter. I made sure that everyone had a nice Easter outfit. I made sure that everyone has nice shoes. I made sure that, you know, if Ella's wearing a dress, do we have tights that go with that? So something for a particular event that you have going on, like we're going to go to a pirate game. So who has a pirate shirt? Make sure we put that in the bag as well. So all of those little things, like paying attention to what you're going to do on your trip and packing for those. I love it. I love that people say they can pack uh, in an overnight bag and stay for weeks. That is so not me. I am not <laughs> that person. I literally have an overnight bag of shoes. Like that is the truth. Um, so in our packing, we actually have, so everyone has their own suitcase. Uh, my husband and I, we have a large suitcase and in that large suitcase, I probably take over way more than I should, but um, and he even said to me the other day, he's like, well, I've learned to pack light because I know that you're just going to take over my space. And I was like, oh, come on. Like, I'm not that bad. Um, but so everyone has their own suitcases. We have our big suitcase. And then I also have a bag that's just for shoes. Um, so then that way we're not trying to put the shoes in the suitcase. We have a whole separate bag. And here I want to put this little caveat in. We drive all the time. This is not a flying trip. Um, I am a little bit too nervous to fly at this point because I don't think I could fit everything I need in my bags. Um, that is really the biggest thing. Like I'm not nervous to fly at all. My kids are excited to fly. Um, if I knew we were going to the beach, um, for a week, sure I could pack. But when we go to Pittsburgh, uh, I'm doing live events up there. I am meeting all of our old friends and family. They're not old. All of our friends and family in Pittsburgh. Um, and we are just trying to jam pack as much stuff into those two weeks that we can while we're there. So I always have school stuff for the kids. I have work stuff. I have all the clothes, all the different things that we do. Plus we bring the dog. So I have to just throw that out there that this is for road tripping to Pittsburgh, um, where we stay for about two weeks. The other thing that we do is we have a, a travel, not a travel, but a bathroom bag. So in that bathroom bag, it's kind of like a duffel bag. And in that bag, that's where we throw all of the cosmetic stuff, the shampoo, the conditioner, our toothbrushes. So then that way, when we get there, this is our bathroom bag. This is our shoe bag. These are our clothes. And I do have to also add that the clothes, I make sure not only that the kids have their suitcases packed, but also that they pull out two separate outfits. So I have a separate bag that I keep very accessible because what we do is we have too many things and we have the dog. So we have to have a, um, like a rack on top of the car and that is where our suitcases are. So we really can't get to the clothes easily if we needed to. Um, and so what we do is we pack two separate, uh, sets of clothes. And then I also pack a pair of pajamas and their toothbrush in this like bag that's kind of in the car with us. Um, so, and it's really just like a drawstring bag. It's just really an easy thing. We always have wipes in there, hand sanitizer, you know, that's just kind of like our go bag. Like if we needed something, we have it. So that is our, that's what we do, like our clothes wise. Um, so for entertaining wise, I just want to say that you guys had some of the best ideas that I would not have thought of. And I love them. 
So there's a few things that we do for sure is we had a lot of people say about the license plate game. And I love that. I love looking. I remember this as a kid looking for all of the different license plates. How many license plates can you find? And what I've done, I've taken it kind of one step further. Please excuse me while I grab this and show you. Um, I actually have a client that is traveling actually the same time I am traveling this time. So I created a little map here and I'm going to show you guys this map. So there's a couple different versions of this. So the first one is a map of the United States and it has all the states on it. The second one has the abbreviations on it. And then the third version is just a checklist. Okay. So what we could do now, now we're ramping up, we're, you know, kind of taking it up to the next level of saying like, okay, what states did we actually see? And then if you really wanted to make it kind of like social studies, they color in the state that they see and that they found. So then that way they are recognizing, well, what state was it? And where is it located in the United States? Maybe how far away is that from us? How far are we traveling? By having that little map, they're able to see, okay, well, we're going through it from this state to this state, and how far did we go, right? So how many more states do we have? That's kind of always the question. Like, how many more states do we have to get to Pittsburgh? How many more states do we have to get to Georgia? And, um, you know, you may often get like, are we there yet? Are we there yet? Um, I'm trying to, fit, uh, if I remember how we navigate that one, we, we just say, okay, we're going to be there in about 12 hours. Sometimes, you know, you could say, well, that's about four movies, you know, whatever that looks like for you guys in your car. Um, but for us, I'm like, okay, this is what we're going to do. We're going to travel and we're going to stop for breakfast. And then we are going, you guys can watch a movie and then we're going to take a break and maybe we're going to do some schoolwork or read or they're going to rest and then we'll stop for lunch. So I kind of give them a timeline as we're traveling. So they kind of have a, a frame of reference. Cause if you say we're going to be there in 12 hours, that sometimes doesn't mean a whole lot to them. Um, you can even do time if they've learned some time. You can say, okay, we're going to be there at 7 p.m., you know, and they can be watching the clock and realizing, okay, well, we're going to be, it's one o'clock now, how many more hours? So you can totally make math out of how long you are going to be there or until you get there as well. So um, that was just, that was one of the games that we had. So the license plate game with our map. Another one that I've created is the road trip find. So that is kind of like a bingo. It could be used as a bingo, but the way I created it, it is very much just color in the pictures when you see them. So you're kind of taking these activities and ideas and turning them into coloring. So definitely be packing some um, crayons, some coloring books, some different things like that, um, sometimes a clipboard um, or something for them to be able to write on. The last game that I've created here is the what am I game. And I used to play this with the kids all the time. This was something that we just played during the day. Like whenever I drove Ella to preschool or we would go to the grocery store or I would say, okay, I'm thinking of a fruit and this fruit is blue. And then they would just start guessing some clues or they would start guessing fruit. Um, we did this with animals. We did this with vegetables. It could be anything. So it's kind of like the reverse of I spy because what I was realizing with I spy is you're going so fast when you're driving that like by the time you say I spy a barn, you know, well, that barn is already way past before anyone's able to say what it actually was. So that's what I really was finding with I spy. And that's why we started doing the, what am I game? And you're just trying to, trying to also help them be critical thinkers. You know, they're thinking about different things, about different fruits, about different, um, it could be animals. It could be, it could be anything. And you're just really encouraging them to think of clues. You're encouraging them to think of all different options that you could be thinking. So lots of great options here. Um, that we're going to be playing this time, this road trip for sure. 
some of the other ideas that were awesome were um, allowing your kids to be the DJ. I loved that. I thought that was a great idea. Allow them to pick some songs and on their own playlist and they get to kind of make the playlist as they go and, you know, be able to play their songs. So that was fun, really getting them involved into the trip for sure. Um, some other things, let me see. Oh, a lot of people were talking about these, uh, busy books. So if you have not heard of something like this, you could make it out of felt, you could make it out of Velcro, you could just create a, a binder essentially full of activities that are engaging for your kids. So one example that I'm thinking of is you have maybe uh, pictures and there's different numbers of them and the kids, your children would have to find how many that would be. So if there are, you know, two cookies in the first box, they would have to find the number two and they would have to put it with that one. So it's really reinforcing some of the skills that they're learning throughout their day um, throughout school, um, and really just encouraging them to continue to learn, but also keeping them busy within this book of them, you know, for themselves, for them. And it's exciting because it's their book. So they're excited about that too. Um, oh, I like this one as well too. Um, kind of like the DJ one, but it's named that tune from, um, kids movies. And I love that. I thought that was a great idea where you are, you know, coming up with all of these different movies that they've seen and what are some of the tunes and what are some of the songs from that movie? So I love that. I thought that was a great idea. Um, trivia as well. So you can look up kids trivia on your phone and just start asking trivia. I mean, there's so many different things you could do Disney trivia, um, for grownups, you know, for the adults in the car, you could do friends trivia, um, any of your favorite TV show trivia, um, or movies or, you know, different age, um, not age range, but years, you know, eighties, nineties. Hey, Hey Jess, hope you guys are all doing well. Um, I love, I love seeing you guys on here. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Um, let me know if you guys also have anything to add. So as we're going through these, let me know if you have anything that you would add to these as well. So some of the other things, obviously we talked about coloring books. Um, some of the other ones were good, like a crossword book, uh, word searches, Sudoku, mazes. Those ones are all great. And I've seen those actually at the dollar store where um, you can get books that have a lot of those different um, games all in one. So I thought that was a great, um, a, that's a great find for sure. You can go to the dollar store and get, um, someone was saying about, on a plane ride, they did wing window clings and even, Oh, look, I just, just, just uh, added that on here. Window stickers, the, the gel ones. I love that. Even in the car, that is so, that's so brilliant. Like, I just love that. I never would have thought of that. And I think that's a great one. And the kids can totally put those right on their windows and then you just peel them right off. So window stickers, window clings. I absolutely love that. Um, any kind of little craft sets that, you know, have all the things included and they're able to grab those and just kind of go, um, traveling chalk, like a little chalkboard. I've done that before where it was like a tin can and there was chalk, um, a chalkboard on the one side, but it was like in the tin can you can, or the tin container, I guess you could add the chalk inside. You can add a little eraser. You can add their little toys. So it's like they had their own little, um, their own little container of toys, but they also could write on the back. So they've done that before. Um, they have individual kinetic sand. And I thought that was a great one as well, where you're able just to have like a little, little space, you know, a little, um, box with it. Um, you don't want to make that one too messy if you're, um, I don't know, driving anywhere really it could, it could get messy, but it's, um, it's a good one. Let me read a comment here. So homemade scavenger hunt, add restaurant and car colors. Oh, I like that one. That's a good one. And I thought of that, like whenever I was doing the road find, you can definitely do restaurants you see on the car, on the road. You could do different, um, car colors. I love that. That's a great one, Jess. Um, magnetics, ma magnetic games or different magnet, uh, magnetic, um, activities you guys could do. That's an easy one to kind of keep the, the things together. What I did, I actually took all of our magnetic letters 
and I took a cookie sheet. Make sure it's magnetic because I have ones that are not magnetic and it did not work. Um, but then they could spell some words on that cookie sheet and just have so much fun with that. Um, they could just be, you know, they could be magnets, any kind of magnets. But what I did the one time was just different letters and had them spell some words. Um, the other things that we saw were um, uh, kids podcasts. And also, I didn't even think of this, like theatrical audiobooks. So Chronicles of, the, of Narnia, things like that. I know my kids, they have been like reciting, like Lion King for some reason has been like on their mind. Um, and they have, they, they pretty much can do all the lines. Like they just love it. Um, so kind of like letting your kids like hear those different kind of um, genres, you know, a play or something like that. So um, I thought that was a cool one too. Here is one that I love and I didn't think of this. Um, this one is a, you could, you could go to the dollar store or you could go to yard sales and get little toys. They don't have to be expensive. They don't have to be big, nothing like that. But you would get these little toys and you would wrap them up and then you would put them in a bag. And then every hour they get to open one of the toys or one of the packages that you've got. I love that. I think that's a great idea. I mean, you could even do that with the first hour they get a package of, a new package of crayons. And then the next hour they get um, a coloring book or the next hour they get um, the window clings. I mean, you could do it with all of the things that we even just talked about. And then each hour they're getting something new to do. So I love that. I thought that was a great idea. Um, Oh, this one was a funny one too. The quiet game. So a dollar quiet game, whoever's quiet the longest, they would get a dollar. Um, so I don't know how long that would go. Is that like, are you quiet for the first hour? Are you quiet for the whole trip? Are you, but I thought that was a funny one for sure. Uh, now for, for us, we, lo I love the interaction and I love the chatting with the kiddos, but that was definitely a fun, um, a fun, especially when moms and dads are like, okay, We've had enough, like, let's just sit quietly. Let's just enjoy the rest of the trip. So, um, or at least a little part of it, right? Um, I love that. So, and then there's another one. There was two. One was um, an erasable doodle book. And what we have is a, a boogie board. So I think they're kind of similar. And there is a link here uh, on the Facebook group. But this one, whoops, sorry, guys. This one here, you would write on. And you can play tic-tac-toe. These have, I've kept these for a long time. And then they just erase. So they were actually, they actually had little cards that go in the back. They have since, um, they're still in the car somewhere, but they don't use them as much. What they do with these is they draw on them. And they love to just draw their pictures. They love to just have fun with them. And then you can erase them. So this was a fun one. They can make, they could send messages to each other. They could draw pictures of what they see, um, just have so much fun with that. So um, a boogie board is what that is called, or an erasable doodle board or book was another one. Um, have you seen the kids put states on your driving, states that you're driving through and the kids move the car? No, I've not seen that. Oh, that's cool. I have not, I have not seen that. I'll have to check that out, Jess. Um, so some of the games that we've talked about, oh, what I, another thing I want to share with you are some of the, the things that you can do with your kids are, um, practicing some of the skills that they're working on. We kind of talked about that, but it could be practicing their name, saying it, spelling it, um, writing it. It could even be practicing their address or your phone number. Um, just really those skills that sometimes we often overlook, but like sitting in the car and even when you're going to the grocery store, these are some skills that you can practice with your kiddos while you are in the car. Uh, other things that you can practice, you can practice some math facts. We're going to be practicing math facts this time um, for sure. And you can practice your math facts. You can practice vocabulary, reading, anything that you guys are working on or the kiddos are working on colors things like that, and really allow the kids just to um, use that time. I mean, they're in the car with you. You can use that time to really practice those, those things. All right. So 
a few things about food and snacks, and then we're going to wrap up. So some of the snacks, what I do here's here. I don't know if anyone else does this. Okay. Let me know if you guys do this, but when we're getting ready for a trip, number one, I go through and I clean the whole house, all the laundry's done. The house is completely cleaned. Um, I want to come home to a clean house and now it doesn't, doesn't, doesn't always happen that way. Um, depending on how busy our week is or depending on how much we have going on. But I really do love, um, having the house clean and orderly and neat, you know, just everything kind of put together. Um, so that's the first thing. And plus I want to have all the laundry washed. So then that way I know that any options that we have are in that suitcase. And then the other thing is, um, I go through and I clean out all the food, the pantry. I clean out, I clean out the refrigerator, everything. And just like, it's almost like nothing. Plus like we go, like I said, we go away for two weeks. So um, at least two weeks. So I want to make sure everything's kind of cleaned up. And what I do in the pantry is I go through and all the snacks that are kind of half open, I throw those in the bag because it is like, you know what, we're on this trip. If you're looking for something, it's probably in there and just finish off the bag and then it's gone. So I did that. We also have um, some snack trail mix. We did some pretzels. Um, the kids have little packages of, um, their cheddar bunnies or, um, I think there are cupcake ones. Um, so they have those, they have, I've done protein bites before those were, um, they could be messy, but we froze them. And then by the time we got them from the cooler bag, they weren't so messy. Um, I do a lot of fruits and vegetables. So a lot of carrots, a lot of cucumbers, celery, um, I do apples and oranges, um, grapes are another easy one. So popcorn, maybe depending on your kids, obviously, you know, your kids and you know, what is safe for them to have in the car. If you have a, if you have toddlers, those, some of those are not really the safest, but, um, the kiddos are older, so they can have things like that. So I do have them help kind of cut up the fruit, you know, the vegetables kind of pack up some cooler bags, things like that. And so the last few tips and tricks, one, um, getting out every few hours and really stretching. Um, what I've done before is I've had them, um, okay, like pick a number 10. I want you to do 10 jumping jacks or let's, um, reach up to the sky or let's run around the building or not run around the building, but like run back and forth or, so I really just have them get out and move. And then that way it's not as like, we're not so tired. I also am, I also make, um, the snacks pretty healthy and our food pretty healthy. So then that way we don't have any upset tummy, um, stomach aches, or we don't have, you know, any emergency bathroom breaks, um, things like that. So I'm trying to make sure that we make our food and we're very conscious of what we're eating while we're traveling. We're drinking water, but not too much water, of course. Um, but really, you're really taking that into consideration. Um, I also sometimes let them pack their own toys. That also helps to kind of make the trip a little more fun, a little more easier for them to say, okay, you know, I'm not going to leave all my toys here. I'm going to pick my top favorite, you know, or I get one bag and I get to fill that up. So they got a, their backpack and they totally filled that up. Um, Jess said about the snacks, the tackle box for the snacks. I have seen those. And I think those are so cool that you can have different compartments and the kids have like different things that they can open up. So maybe you have goldfish in one, you have cheese in one, you have, um, you know, fruits in one, and they can just kind of go through and pick whatever they want. So I love that. My kids this trip, um, or at the beginning of the week, they don't really have it now, but they made their own Lunchables by just using the lunch meat and the cheese that we had in the fridge. And they use cookie cutters and they were able to make their own Lunchables that way. And they made different shapes with the cheese and the meats. And then they put crackers in there too. So, and of course, little treats for themselves, of course. Um, definitely let the kiddos help pack. We talked about that and prepping the snacks and the food during or before the trip. That's definitely helpful to alleviate um, any of the stress. And finally, I mean, some people were talking about leaving and driving straight through the night. That is not for me. We tried that one time. I'm a terrible, um, sleep in the car person. <laughs> so every time I woke up, I would be like, honey, slow down, honey, 
that's a, that's a big turn, honey. It was like, not, not good for us. It was not good at all. It rained the whole time. So it was just not enjoyable. Um, the kids ended up waking up. So, uh, that is just not for us, but kudos to all of those families that kind of get on that, that system and that rhythm and are able to travel through the night with their kiddos. That's awesome. Um, so good luck to all of the families that are, um, traveling and if all else fails, turn on a movie, <laughs> load them up with snacks, just enjoy the trip. Um, we've definitely done that. We've definitely, they pick out their own movies that they want to take. Um, and they have their tablets. Like, trust me, we enjoy some tablet time. We enjoy some movies, but I also limit it, limit it and say, okay, now it's time for a break or now it's time for, um, you know, quiet time or, you know, whatever that looks like, but do whatever works best for your family. But I hope some of these tips and tricks were helpful. Um, Jess said we're flying to California in May. So looking for all the tips. I love it. Enjoy. If you have any other questions, please feel free to drop them here in the comments. Please feel free to reach out if you are interested in purchasing the road trip games that we have. Please feel free um, to reach out and I can get those for you. And I just hope you guys enjoy, enjoy your travel, enjoy the time with your kiddos and have a wonderful day. So I will see you guys all soon. Remember, see each moment as a chance to learn, create and have fun. Bye guys.